when I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in sorrow, Jesus lifted me. When I was in danger, Jesus lifted me. When I was discouraged, Jesus lifted me. When I was in pain, Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Glory, glory, glory. Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. And now at this time, it's my privilege to introduce Lance Manez. Manez? Manez. Manez. I'll get it right eventually. And uh, he's going to play for us our special piece. Thank you for coming. We enjoy whenever you can be here. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, Lance. Lance.
defense my righteousness oh god how i need you amen Twice a month, I have the privilege of introducing our pastor to his pulpit. And we certainly enjoy the days you get to spend with us, Pastor Wright. At this time, Pastor Curtis Joseph Wright Sr. will present us with the gospel. Thank you, Lance, for that music. You have another one? After we have our sermon, just come on up and share it with us. Is that all right with you? Yes. Oh, good. Lord, as we open your word, open our minds, open our hearts. Open whatever we need open that's closed, that's plugged, that prevents us from receiving your blessing. Remove me from me and fill me with thee. Amen. Amen. The Bible talks about a pit. King James Version calls it a bottomless pit. You'll find reference to it in the book of Revelation. The pit. What kind of pit is described? Bottomless. Bottomless pit. Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 to 6 describes the pit partially. It's not a complete description in Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 to 6, but it's a partial Description of what? Bottomless. Only one person knows? Bottomless. Bottomless pit. And the fifth angel sounded. And I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. And there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Unto them was given power. That's the partial description of the bottomless pit. Doesn't sound like a pleasant place. Would you like to go into that pit? No. no way. The other description is found in Revelation chapter 20. A description as it is a continuation, an extension of Revelation chapter 9. Revelation 20 verses 1 to 3. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless, what? And a great chain in his hand. And he lay hold of the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. No more. No more. Till the end of the thousand years. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. The book of Isaiah describes a pit. Take a moment, open your Bible. Isaiah 51 verse 11 says, Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion 
and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. Isaiah 51 Verses 11 to 14. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy. Don't you want to be a part of that everlasting joy? Yes. Everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou that thou should be afraid of a man that shall die, and of the son of man which shall be made as grass, and forgetteth the Lord thy maker that has stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, and has feared continuously every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he shall not die in the pit. Sometime life can be the pits. Have you ever experienced life being the pits? Sometimes we fall into the pit. Sometimes we're pushed into the pit. But all of us were born in the pit. Don't blame it on our relatives. Even the great grandsons of Abraham were in the pits. Sons of Jacob, Joseph's brothers, were in the pit. Life for them was the pits. Standing before the prime minister of, where? Egypt. Egypt, trembling, shaking in their boots, begging for food, accused of being foreign spies, Life for them was the pits, shaking and trembling, trembling and shaking. Benjamin, the youngest son of Jacob, accused of theft. It wasn't petty theft, it was royal theft. Stealing the cup, the prime minister's silver cup. Life for them was the pits. But God has a way of lifting us out of the pit. Ain't you glad? Yes. Ain't you glad that we serve a God who will care about us enough to lift us out of the pit? Look at this snapshot. This little photojournalism. Genesis Chapter 45, beginning with verse 1. It describes what does it describe? It describes how God lifted the brothers of Joseph out of the pit. Then Joseph could not refrain himself before all of them that stood by him and he cried Tell everybody to get out of this room. And he stood there with no man with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud. And the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard him weeping, wailing, crying. And Joseph said unto his brothers, I am Joseph. Doth my father let yet live? Is my father alive? Has Jacob died or is he alive? And his brothers could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brothers, Come near to me. 
And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, who you sold into Egypt. Now don't be grieved. Don't be angry with yourself that you sold me here. God sent me before you to preserve life. And he goes on to tell them that there's been a famine for two years, but there are five more years of famine. And he tells them, God sent me to save your lives by a great deliverance. Go back to my father and say to him, thus saith thy son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me. Don't delay. And you shall dwell in the land of Goshen. Thy children, thy children's children, thy flocks, thy herds, and all that thou hast. And there will I nourish thee. For yet there are five more years of famine. But the story doesn't start there. It starts kind of in Genesis 37. It's kind of the beginning of the story. Looking at verse 12, Genesis 37, verse what? We're going to see what is kind of the beginning of the story. His brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel, that's Jacob, their father, said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? I'll send thee to them. And Joseph said to him, Here am I. And he said to him, Go and see if everything's all right with your brothers. Bring me good word back. He sent him out of the valley of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. And he came to Shechem. You don't just come to Shechem. You have to walk for 75 miles to get to Shechem. Before you get there. It's a hike. A march. 75 mile walk to get to Shechem. But Joseph made it. But his brothers weren't there. And a man saw him wandering in the wilderness. What are you looking for? Did you lose something out in this field? Something out in the valley? He said, I'm looking for my brothers. They were taking care of some flocks and herds. Oh, they're not here. They're in Dothan. Another hike. But Joseph says, I'm going to go see my brothers. I'll take a report back to my father. Yes. So what happened? Verse 17. Let's go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him, before he even came near to them, they conspired against him to kill him. And they said to one another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast has devoured him. And Reuben heard of it. Reuben heard of it, the oldest brother. And he delivered him out of their hands and said, let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness. And lay no hand upon him. So now Joseph is in the pit before his brothers were standing in the pit before him. In the pit. And then the Ishmaelites come riding through. 
camels, horses, mules, donkeys, laden with spices, essential oil, balm, ointment, and they sold their brother to the Ishmaelites. And they took him to Egypt and sold him to Potiphar. So from the pit in the wilderness to the pit of Potiphar's house to the pit of prison, Joseph went from pit to pit, then to Pharaoh. My wife Dahlia fell again on Sunday unable to use her legs, unable to walk, unable to get up, unable to sit up without assistance. She's hospitalized. And they're working with her using techniques of physical therapy and other things to help her. But I would like to share a song, just the lyrics. Is it all right if we share the lyrics of a song? The whole book of Psalms is a hymnal. They're all songs to be sung. This is one in Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice. Because he's listened with his ear to me. Therefore I will call upon him as long as I live, the sorrows of death come past me and the pains of hell got hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, I beseech you, deliver me. Gracious is the Lord and righteous and merciful Take a look at Jeremiah. He was in a pit. Jeremiah 38, 6. Jeremiah 38, 6. Life in the pit can be rough. But look at what Jeremiah 38, verse 6 says. They took Jeremiah and cast him in the dungeon of Machiah. It was in the court prison. They let him down with ropes. And in the pit was no water but mire. You ever heard of quicksand? That's mire. And Jeremiah sunk in the mire. It doesn't end there. As Jeremiah was sinking in the mire, I can imagine him reciting the Psalms. He had been educated and he knew the Psalms of David. I can imagine him singing as he was sinking. Sinking as he was singing. Which was it? Singing as he was sinking or sinking as he was singing? Which was it? Okay. I can imagine him with a sanctified imagination turning the pages of his hymnal to the 40th song in the songbook, Psalm 40. And these are the words I imagine Jeremiah singing. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry and lifted me out of a horrible pit and lifted me out of a horrible pit. Me. How about you? Has the Lord ever lifted you out of a horrible pit? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't look at me with those crazy looks. You just don't know how the Lord has lifted me. Out of the pit, he lifted me. 
You just don't know how the Lord set me free. You just don't know how the Lord made a way. You just don't know how the Lord brought me out. You just don't know how the Lord brought me through. He did it for me. He'll do it for you. I've been through hell. I've been through the fire. I've been through tribulations. I've been through the pit. I've been talked about, but still, I'm here. I've kept the faith. I kept on walking. I kept on teaching. I kept on preaching. I kept on glorifying his name. I will lift him up. I've been through the water. I've been through the flood. I've been through the fire. All through his blood. Been through heartache. Been through headache. Been through storms. But I'm still here. I kept on praying. I kept on believing. I've been through the rain. I've been through the pain. I kept on singing. Kept on praising. Been through sickness. I've been through disease. When I think about the goodness of Jesus, I just want to magnify the Lord. How about you? Thank you, Jesus. Glory be his name. He kept me. He saved me. He forgave me. He raised me. And I will lift him up. Because he lifted me up. I'll give him my heart. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in sorrow, Jesus lifted me. When I was in danger, Jesus lifted me. When I was discouraged, Jesus lifted me. When I was in pain, Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus set me free. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. Now I can say to you, souls in danger, look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. Love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, buried deeply, stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters, lifted me, now saved am I. Mark chapter 4 tells the story of Jesus and his disciples out on the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus said, I'll take a little nap. I need some rest. And while Jesus slept, the sky got blacker than a hundred midnights down in a cypress swamp. The thunders rolled across the heavens. The lightning wrote her name in a zigzag on the backside of the cloud. The waters tossed and turned and twisted the little ship. The men who knew so much about the Sea of Galilee said, we got to find Jesus. And they found him sleeping in the middle of a storm. They shook him. Wake up, Jesus. Jesus woke up. Get up, Jesus. Jesus got up. Stand up, Jesus. Jesus stood up. And chastised him and said, you have a little faith. Then he raised his hand and said three words. Peace, be still. And the clouds dissipated. And the thunder shut her mouth. And hushed her voice. The wind went back into his chambers and slammed the door. The waters lay down like a baby and said, we're going to hold you up. 
we're just like those disciples. As long as we think that we can handle our ship, we don't call on Jesus. But when the going gets rough, when the going gets tough, we start looking for Jesus. And this is, we, this is what we say. We say, Master, the tempest is raging. The billows are tossing high. And the sky is o'ershadowed with blackness. No shelter, no help is nigh. Carest thou not that we perish? We're going to die. How can thou sleep? When each moment is so madly threatening a grave in the angry deep, the winds and the waves shall obey thy will. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Whether the wrath of the storm-tossed sea or demons or men or whatever it be, no waters can swallow the ship where lies the master of the ocean and earth and skies, they all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Master, with anguish of spirit, I bow in my grief today. The depths of my sad heart are troubled. Awaken and save, I pray. Torrents of sin and of anguish sweep over my sinking soul. I perish, I perish, still master. Oh, hasten and take control. I'm so glad that love woke up that day. I'm so glad that love sat up that day. I'm so glad that love stood up and said to the storm, shut up. I'm so glad that love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. I'm so glad that Jesus Lifted me. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Would you make a commitment with me before I have the benediction? Would you pray, each of you, for the pastor and especially for his wife who is in the hospital and they're searching to find the result of what's her illness? Would you make that a personal prayer? Yes, Lord. Let's hear you say amen if you mean it. Amen. May the Lord fill you with all hope as you trust in him so that God may fill you with overflowing faith and hope by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And let all the people say, Amen. Amen. Amen.